Any news for him in goals, Moti? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Any news for him in goals? Um, there's a couple. I'll send you some pictures tomorrow. Okay, good. All right, so we're ready to go. Okay, whoever's here. All right, I'd like to start by wishing everyone a Gmarch um, Zimatova. As a former student of Rabbi Ash, I have very fond memories of his brilliant teaching abilities. And it gives me great honor to welcome Rabbi Ash tonight. Rabbi Ash is uniquely qualified and is able to share with us some of his extensive knowledge of the Abraminim and all the halachas associated with them. Specifically, Rabbi Ash will be sharing with us a halachic analysis of the Ben Katon and Dalad Minim ownership. And we are very appreciative of Rabbi Ash giving his time to share with us these insights and give us some understanding tonight. Rabbi Ash. Thank you. Thank you, Akiva. <clears throat> I want to just start with the... Uh, a story which may seem to have nothing to do with a cotton and Dalit minim, but I think it's going to become relevant when we come to the end. If I'm not clear, please let me know because my voice is a little bit hoarse these days. <clears throat> so I was super fortunate in my life to have two main mush mushbeam. One of them passed away not very long ago, Rabbi El Khan, and I was very fortunate to spend a year as a shliach to the Lubavitcher High School at that time, which was in Ocean Parkway. And Rabbi El, as an incentive to get boys to go to Ocean Parkway, to learn with high school students during the day and evening, as well as their own Seder, and to forsake 770, which is a big sacrifice for a bocha because you're, when you're in 770, the Rebbe will come out to a minion, you just pop into a minion. If there's a surprise for bringing, you're there. If the Rebbe goes to the oil hole, you're there for the mincha. So you forlo you forgo those things in order to be a shliach in Ocean Parkway. And to be truthful, you know, not every shliach is as committed as, uh, as the shluchim that you have known here in YG, et cetera. A shliach to go to Ocean Park who doesn't want to forgo to be away from the Rebbe. What's going to be an incentive enough to do it? And it was the fact that the Rabbi Yoel had agreed that he would come every night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night, Sunday to Thursday, every night from 8 to 9.30 to give a shir and chsidus. And furthermore, he would never stop at 9.30. He would always go from 8 to 10 every night and never miss. Sunday to Wednesday inclusive was Samach Vov and Thursday night was a shear in Tanya. So to hear a shear from him every day, that is an incredible incentive and people want to be a shliach to Ocean Parkway. And fortunately, I and my chavrusa Yirmiya Kramer, Yirmiya Kramer, Kramer were selected amongst the 20 boys that went to Ocean Parkway. So I had a whole year of hearing his shiurim. And besides you hearing his shiurim, every yom and chassidish yom and the pagla he would fabring, you to Skislov, you tshvat, for the boys exclusively, he would come out there and fabring. Sukkahs he would fabring in his sukkah, in his house, for the boys of Veshluchim exclusively. And he was, he was an unbelievable fabrinker. No bluff, no bull about him. He would drink to the bottom of the bottle and Chassidus would just come straight out of him. An amazing, an amazing person. Now, I've always said him for a year, he didn't know my name, I can assure you. He didn't know most of our names. But his method of giving over Chassidus and explaining things and perspective on life which just became part of you by his osmosis was a, that was a real mashpia and a year, a year of mash, mashpia like that, a tremendous concentration. And prior to that, that was, I was what? I think just 20 maybe. 
when I was 18, my second year in Yeshiv Gedola, Reb Zalman Serebransky was our mashpia bechlal in Yeshiv Gedola, but he was my mashpia and Kramer's as well, Yemi Kramer's, because he learned with us Chassidus every morning, Sunday to Friday, 7 till 8.30, every morning for a year as well. So it's not a hashpia, sort of like a superficial hashpia. We're talking where a person is spending hundreds of hours with you and talking with you and giving you over his individual ideas and thoughts and citizen lifestyle. So in light of that, I want to tell you a story with Reb Zalman that happened with me. And it will reflect on this year tonight. In the 1960s, there became a question of whether all the Lovim were kosher for Dalit Minim. They had begun to plant what they call canary lulavim around Yerushalayim and in the entrances to Yerushalayim, which was a different type of palm tree than the typical date palm trees that you, if you ever go now up Fish 90 and you drive up the way they to, from Yerushalayim up to Tveria and to Tzvas, and you're passing past Beit Sha'an, and it's just replete, it's full of hundreds of thousands of palm trees. They are the true date palm trees. I'm not going to go into the differences between them for the moment, but suffice to say that they look different. The, all the palm trees that you see here in Australia are the, the in Melbourne are canary palms. So the palms that you see, they're all the, the branches are sloping downwards, right, very low down. Whereas a date palm, the palm branches, amazingly, they seem to just shoot straight up. None of them float down, they shoot up. That's one difference. And of course, the major difference is that a date palm has edible dates and a canary palm does not have edible dates. So there became a question, are these, date, are these canary palms kosher for dalit minium? And botanists and agriculturists brought up this question in the 1960s. I'm not going to go into names. And I must say, I will mention one name in the end. After the, uh, the main, one of the main ones in the end, his name is Professor Yehuda, Fe Yehuda Felix. And he wrote a book, two books, on botany and trees in the Chumish and in Mishnais. And he also did animals and uh, animals in the Chumish and Mishnais. They're all different books and has pictures of every single animal mentioned in the Chumish with their Latin name and where they come from. Every tree and everything mentioned in the Chumish and in Mishnais. It's a fantastic book, really. I love looking at it. I ripped it off from somewhere. Anyway, so he comes to the conclusion, I must say, that in the, and this is already in the early 70s, that canary palms are not regular date palms and cannot be used for Dalit meaning. Now he's not a Rav, but he's a professor and obviously a El Chayid. In Tov Shalom Ches, I'm gonna read you a line of Moshe Feinstein's So I have a tremendous deal for Moshe Feinstein. When I was in Yeshiva, we thought he was a Mako. But when you get older, you realize that this was a man who was dealing with American families living in one of the bedroom apartments in Manhattan. He had to say, you gotta use this. You got one sink. You can't tell them you gotta have two sinks. You can't tell them you got two. Anybody can say you need two dishwashers flashing and milking. Of course, I have one, you have one, everybody has it. But what happens if you live in a one bedroom apartment in Manhattan and you're not allowed to put it in? What are you meant to do? So he, he flicked Evan Aces. So people, you say, oh, he's a maker, yeah. But you use one dishwasher. Adarabha, he was helping guys do it. So he was, he's, it's a bit big, but he has that perspective. But listen to what he says about a canary lulav. But afbidi evan, kishain lulav acher, ain yoitzin boy yidei mitzvah, behu bracha levatola, behu borrow or poshut, ain sho ain lodin boze klal. You cannot get any clearer than that, right? So, dairy, so canary lulavim are absolutely out. And I have to tell you, everybody, in Australia in the 70s, there was nothing else. 
Aaron Fagel and Oliver Shalom would be selling, and the Fags would be selling these incredibly strong lulavim. They were the best lulavim ever. And that's all we had. But then this tzad came out, got posted up on yeshiva. Somebody big a big chokhm in the 80s. It's already four years later, posted it up. So what are we meant to do? I can't tell you what Rabbi Groen did. We went to Alice Springs. But in the end, we got, I brought in from Israel, Lulav in, in, the, in 82. And I was selling them here. One of my customers for Dalit Minim in 1982 was Rabbi Zalman Serebransky. So he comes in. And of course, Reb Zalman's my mashpia. And I have the utmost ultimate derech eretz and love for him. So I give him what I've got is my best esoregim. And when he comes to take a lulav, I say, Reb Zalman, do habich do halulav, and Eretz Yisrael, this is the best of lulav, you know, please take it. And he said to me, ah, Pinchas, no, I will not take this lulav. I get my lulavim, I get them from Aaron Feiglin. I will take from Aaron Franklin. So I said, oh, Rabbi Zalman, haven't you seen Rabbi Feinstein's sucked in that, uh, that these love him are even possibly ever? It's a brothel of a taller. You can't, you can't use it. Because I'm young, you know? I'm in my late 20s. I'm telling a guy in his 70s, well, you know, you're, you're a pot, you know, I'm telling him, you know, that's what you are when you're young. So I said, but then, so I'm trying to tell him what to do, right? So the, but this is the, the most fine sense that it's possible to have it. Pinchas. What do you think? It's better in Yiddish, but what can I say? Vos mainstam in Gnutsin in Ruslan. What do you think we used in Russia? We didn't have these date palms. We had, we had canary palms. Vos vet er zogen Feinstein. As the all the gewaltige Grace of Sidim among Kamel nicht kein given the midst of Dalat Minim bin Zayra Lulav, what is he saying in his Psak that all of the great and venerable Sidim never fulfilled the mitzvah of Dalat Minim with the Lulavim they had? Das is umeglach. That is impossible to say. I'm going to be using the Lulavim, was Allah Sidim of Alamon genutzt. I'm going to be using the Lulavim that the Sidim have always used. And away he did, and he did, and he continued to use Aaron Flagland's love. Anyway, four, four or five years down the track, and I can show it to you in Kashvist Dalit Minim from Yechil Michel Stern. Shlomo Zalman Oerbach, the Rosh Hashiva from Koltoira, he didn't write Svarim in Shuvahs, but he gave lots of Shuvahs and lots of his Talmidim, and his Talmidim are not Talmidim, like what we say Talmidim, these are Goinim and Goinim. They wrote down his the chosen answers. So this fellow, this sort of Yechiel Michel Stern, a Rosh Hashiva from the one of the biggest Yeshivas in, in, in Yerushalayim, who and his book has been uh, translated in English and it's got all the beautiful pictures, the, the classic one of all the pictures of Dalit Minim. He asked him about a dairy, about a canary lulaf. He asked him and he wrote it in his book. And he writes that Rabbi Shalom Zalmeirbach said, that you can use a canary lulav. I can't find that. that's written in the book, but I also saw at that time, but now I can't locate it, that Rabbi Shalom Zalma said, that's the type of lulav that we all used in Europe. That's everything that we used. We only used this canary palm. There was nothing else available. What can you say? That all the people, all the grace of Rebbeim and all the grace of Yidin and Goenim in, 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 in Europe when didn't never fulfill the mitzvah of Dalit Minim with their lulav, couldn't be. And when I read that and I saw that, I said, my goodness sake, that's exactly what Reb Zalman had gesagt. Mamish. Him and Shlomo Zalman had gesagt, the Zalba Zalman Mamish. Nevertheless, as an aside, don't use a canary lulav. Make sure you use one of these areas you sell with a lulav. That way you fulfill everybody's opinion. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I'm going to be able to get into this uh, thing now because how do I get into my? Uh, how do I get into that? Let's just share screen again. Let me share, share screen again, right? Okay, where is it? Is this it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm going to go through a. I'm going to go through a PowerPoint with you. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about. 
what are the requirements and what are the issues involved with dealing with your son who is below bar mitzvah with regards to Dalit Minyan? What are the issues and concerns? And how is it, how, what is the best way to deal with these concerns and eliminate them so that everybody is doing everything to the very best of their ability? With regards to the mitzvah of Dalit Minyan, both the adult and both the cotton. Okay, so let's start. Let's go through. Uh, oh, get me out of here. Let's go through some of the facts. Unfortunately, there's no altar ever on Simon Tofresh and Ches. So this is the actual Shulchan Aruch. So here's the din. A person cannot fulfill his duty of Dalat Minim with the lulav of his fellow, if it was loaned to him as a loan. Well, the Pasuk says, it has to be your own, it has to be your own lulav and esrim. Even if the owner of the lulav and esrim says to him, to the fellow, who's going to be using it, this is yours until you fulfill the mitzvah. It's temporarily yours. And afterwards, it'll be back to mine as in the beginning. So it's not matalam nasachs. It's just saying this is yours for momentarily until I get it back. Lo yotza. The heavy commercial, if because he's not fulfilling his duty. The second one, because he's using a borrowed lulav, even though the guy never said I'm lending to you, but that's what he basically is doing. He's lending it to you, and the. Uh, you are not yotzer. But if you gave him a full gift and said, "This is your lulav and esr," then you are yotzer the mitzvah of dalat minim by using someone originally someone else's. And then we know this law: If he gave it to him on the condition that means the owner of the lulav and esr gave it to a second person on the condition that as a gift on the condition that he returns it. He can fulfill his duty so long as he returns it. Shematana for a gift, almanos lahachazir, on the condition that it will be returned later. Shemo matana, it is a gift so long as you fulfill the condition of returning it. But if he doesn't return it, lo yotza. So then it's not, you're not yotza, it's not a gift because the gift was dependent on that. So that everybody knows, right? I'm going to, we've got to bring this in to do with the cotton soon. I'm just showing you the mocker of it for a moment. The mocker is the Gemara in Sukkah, Tanya Rebbe It doesn't seem to say the mocker so clear in the Shulchan so I want you to see it. Shem she'in aram yotzi dey chavah sabiyom tevishin shalchag belolavi shalchaveirai. Just as a person can't fulfill his duty on the first day of Yom Tov with the lulav of his friend, ekstiv v'lakachtem lochem, you have to take your own lulav and esrog on the first day. It has to be Michel Ochem. I'm just going to add, because I'm not bringing all the dinim Shulchan Aruch, that we are knowing in Chutz Oretz, this is brought in Al Tereba Shulchan Aruch, because it's in an earlier thing about Devarim Hapsulim Bedalat Minim, that on the second day of Yom Tov, we also should do it as a form of, in Chutz Oretz, as Maton uh, Amnas Lahasa, and you're not used to a shol. shol. It's a machloek, it's going he's he's machmer. Now, there is a din that a father is obligated to be machanach, his son or his daughter in Torah mitzvahs and to train them to be ready to fulfill Torah mitzvahs. That is a requirement that Chachamim put on the father to train the son or the daughter. The mocker for the din of Chinuch is in a number of places in Shas. This is one of the places. Tonu Rabbonon, cotton ha a cotton who, a child that's a boy under bar mitzvah, who knows how to shake the lulav. And that I'm not putting down here, but what it means is he knows that it goes up and down 
and sideways. He knows how to shake the luluv, even if it's not in the correct order of things. Chayov Bululov is obligated to do the mitzvah of luluv. The father is obligated to organize his luluv. Chayev betzitzis, he's chayev to have tzitzis. The father has to organize it for him. And if he knows how to put on tefillin, chayev lishmer, and if he can lishmer tefillin, if he knows how to look after tefillin, aviv loy keach loy tefillin. His father has to purchase for him tefillin. And this is a mocker for chinuch, midarabonon, that a father has to be mechanach his child. Rashi on Chai Belulov says there in the Gemara, Lechan Choy Midivreihe. He is obligated to educate him and train him by their words of the Chachomi. How exact is it to say Chai of Belulov? He is obligated, the father is obligated to train him in a Lulov. Are we talking about training him how to do the mitzvah? Are we talking about preparing him, showing him how to buy things, to, get, to actually purchase for him? What is involved in this training? So Toysus on the spot there says the following. It says about Tefillin openly, he buys in Tefillin. With Tzitzis notice, it doesn't say he's buys in tzitzis, purchase, it says high in tzitzis. Why? The mistama tell us yeshla, because my swami has got a garment. He's got a four corner garment, so you don't have to get it for him. But gabi lulav. But with regards to lulav, ah, come on, what have I done? Ah, I have to go back, sorry. How do I get rid of these pictures so you can see the whole thing here? I'll go like this. No, I'm not sure. Move them over here, see what happens. Okay, sorry, everybody. So let's go back to this. So it doesn't say purchase scissors because you must probably got scissors. It says purchase twillin because he doesn't have. What about Lulav? There'll be Lulav, Nami, and Lulav also. It doesn't say purchase, it just says hi, Lulav. So what does Taisa to say? Yocha lot says, Bululav, I shall obi. He can be yaita with the lulav of his father. So you don't have to purchase him one. That's the first head center of Tosis. No requirement to purchase. You can fulfill it with your father's lulav. Now keep in the back of your mind, you cannot fulfill the mitzvah with a borrowed lulav. E nami, another answer. No, you do have to buy him the twill. You do have to buy him the lulav, just like you have to buy the twill. Mishum de tefillin de mayim you caught him because to tefillin they cost a lot of money. Shaykh behula kicha. That's why he stresses you look kayach by tefillin you buy him tefillin. But dalat minim you guys know by now most of you dalat minim are cheap, cheap as water. So it doesn't say buy in dalat minim because it's, it's, it's so easy to buy. It just says hi betul hi behula, but it also means you should buy him. So therefore, you have two ways of looking at it from what Tosa says. But that's just to be shown. Let's go to the Shulchan Aruch. Like I said, that there is no top range of curse in in, um, in Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch. So this is this is the Mechaber, and here is the Din. Cotton hayodeya lananeya lulav kedinoi. A cotton who knows how to be how to shake the lulav properly. Aviv chayiv liknoi sloi lulav. His father is obligated to buy him a lulav, a set of dalat minim. Kedai lachan choy be mitzvahs, in order to educate him and train him in mitzvahs. So there's a befeidah shalocha. There's no ramah on this. So it's not just minik svad, it's unzun a minik oichet. That's it. However, and I must quote to you, like I said, there's no alternative. The Mishnah Bura says, Uposhet, when it says that you've got to buy Malulav, it's not like guys today, someone asked me, you got a postular postular asterisk for my kid. Sorry, I don't have a postular asterisk for your kid. I've got plenty of postular asterisk. 
but I'm not selling you Apostle Esrit. It's obvious that the, if you're buying for your son, there's a cotton for Dalit Minim, and it has to be kosher, kosher to Dalit Minim, just like for a Godel, period. The Taz on the Big Shulchanor says, he brings, I'm going to read a quick, listen, all you guys know how to learn it. Don't get bored because I'm going through it. I want you to see, I'm, keep, I'm, I'm coming to practical conclusions, but I want you to see all the Makotas of where it comes from. So we're talking about purchasing the lulav for him. So the Mahabra and Shulchanah says, you've got to buy a lulav for a cotton who knows what he's doing. The Marshal is a contemporary of the Mahabra, of the Beis Joseph, of the Beis of Karam. And he writes on this din, the Rashal Shalom Aluria, writes on this, Kalzeh Beli Nira, Kosovo Zeh Beli Nira, the Behedya, Shanina Chayev Belulav. Why is the Mahabra going beyond what it says in the Gemara? In the in the uh, in the Brisa, behead your shout, Shanina Chayv Lulav. It just says you're obligated, little Lulav. My name is Shom Shitzarach Liknois Lulav. Don't say you got to buy it for him. Come on, Shikosa Gabi Tulim. Why, as it says by Tulim, you got to buy it. It says the Hayudea Lishmar Tulim, Obvig Lekeach Loy Tulim. But it doesn't say Lekeach Loy Lulav. It just says Chayv Lulav. The Chayla mix us go in him Gabi Tits, go to Nova Lekeach Loy Tits. I will belulav to non chayev belulav. I'm underlining. You only have to. It's obligated to law. But and the and it's an obvious reason that it's different. Where it says buy, it means buy. Where it says you don't have to buy, it means you ain't sort of click this little of fifty ounce way. But you don't have to buy him, and I clicked off him. You don't have to buy him at the cot the lulav. Kila acha shiotza beyovim because it's simple. After the father is yotza doing the mitzvah himself, yitlena live noy levarecholov. He can give it to his son to make the bracha. Mashain can't fill him, Mashain can't fill him. He can't take off his tool and give it to him. He's going to miss Dab and he's going to miss everything already. I can't show you. But the Taz does not agree to that argument of the Marshal, and he supports more or less. He makes a pshara between him and the Machaber. And he says, I don't really know what is disturbing him, what is difficult to the Marshal that he cannot allow. The Mechaber to say that you've got to buy the, the Dalit Minim for this, this cotton. The Zem Mairi Mimishiyali Maseges Liknois Lugnoi Lulavayachot. This one, the Mechaber here in Shulchan Aruch is talking about a person, a father, who's got the financial wherewithal to be able to buy a Lulav for his son. So he says, buy it. Yasa came, let him do it, buy it for him. G'day Shigam Benoi Yivut Ko'achal Avorek Bishoshat Siboroi Menhal. So that his son can do a shake the lulav and during halal, just like the father. Which is better than making the bracha afterwards, which is what the mashallah is suggesting. So you've got the, the two ways. You've got the part of buying it according to the mechaba, if your father has the wherewithal. And if he doesn't, as the mashallah is saying, that his, the father can give him his. But... Remember, we just said that you cannot fulfill the mitzvah on the first day in our Torah with a lulav and esri that's not 100% your own. If it has been borrowed, you cannot be yaitza. And we are machmir to say that on second day yontav and chutz lorets, you neither can you be yaitza with a borrowed lulav and esri, it has to be your own. And in light of that, the Mechaba brings the following din, which makes things a little bit different for us. So maybe I don't want to get this down. I can't get, I can't move that thing there to show exactly where it is. It's most probably also Tafresh and Ches. So the Mechaba in Shulchan says this, Don't give your Lulav and Esig to a cotton on the first day of Sukkot. Kredem Shiyotzebai before you have fulfilled the duty yourself. <clears throat> because the cotton can acquire the hula Vanessa when you give it to him, it'll become his own and he will be yaitz of the mitzvah of Dalit Minim completely because he's using a Daf Dalit Minim, which are his own. However, the Ainoi Makna Allah in Torah, but he cannot give away his property according to the Torah. 
Venimsa, so we would find Shiim Hechazir Eloi, that when the cotton will return it to the God or to the Father, let's say, Einoi Muchser, it is not returned in full extent to the Father. And it doesn't belong to the Father anymore. And it will not be Shalochem of the fathers anymore. And if the father wants to give it away, Matonel Almanas Lahachset, to somebody else, for example, he can't because it's not his. If the father wants to use it second day as his own, he can't because the cotton has not got the power to return it. And this is a great problem. How are we going to deal with giving your Lula Vanessa to a cotton if, okay, he can acquire it from himself, but he can never return it to you? And now look how the Mahaba adds a couple of outs in this area. And in fact, in the basis of on the tour, he gives a third example, which I'm going to bring up quite a bit. Here are the two points he says you can do to avoid these issues of giving your cotton a set of dollar minimum on the first day. Because one is there are some who say if he's reached the age of an infant, which I'm going to show you soon means six or seven, muta you can give it to him and he can give it back to you. And it'll be yours. But I must say it's only given back to you, Midarabonon. And if you want to be able to have it yours, Minatoira, it'll be a problem. Then he gives a second way. If he holds the lul of an esrog, and I think if you saw that picture that I had beforehand of a father holding it with a little boy, if you hold it together with the little boy, hand in hand, since the lul of an esrog never fully left the hand of the father, Shapir Domi, he's doing a good thing. That is a good method. That is a proper thing. And it will still be his own Lulavaness. So you hold it together with him and it's still yours. Now let's examine that. Just what does that mean? So I'm going to have to go to the mission abroad to explain it. Can we move this? Oh, come on. Where is it? Where's where? No, oh, you can see. Can you see? Can you see it at all? Can you see the full page? All the pictures are in the way. See the full page. Ah, oh, good. Uh, perfect. Because I've got it on a big screen. So here, see what the Mishnah Bura says. Hapuyuta, she says, Haina kevin volvo kevin zayin. So six and seven year olds can acquire and sell according to the chachamim in certain areas. And it's muta the ozma tonose matana medivrei seifne. Uh, yeah, but it's only a matana midarabonon. So that doesn't help you really. If you want it to be your own minatoya first day, so you can still give it out to others, you're going to go and time the marshal. You're going to do a matana masach there. It's not going to help you this purpose. Now, this is the part. Listen how he explains this. This is really good. Since it doesn't go out of his hand, you're still holding it. He's, it's still, that is a, a good way, a good method, and it'll remain yours. Rotsulema, so he explains it. Through this, that the cotton actually is not acquiring the Dalit Minim from you. That's why it's permissible for you. Even if he's less than six or seven. And even if he didn't give it over to the cotton at all as a gift. Even if you lend it to him, Canal. Even if you lend it to him, because you know why? It's still yours. You, you, you're never losing ownership. It's always yours. But the problem is, of course, for the cotton, it's not his. It's only helping you that it remains in your ownership. That you can fulfill your duty with it again afterwards or give it away to someone else. But of course, holding it together with the cotton, since the cotton does not acquire it, the cotton will not fulfill his duty of doing Dalit Minim in such a method. It's not his, it's not called his own. 
by Avin Mitzvah's Chinuch, and the father would not be fulfilling training him properly because, because uh, he, it's not his. Now, I put this in huge red, and I'm going to show this to you later. This is going to be. This is going to be the crux of what I'm about to say to you. One of the cruxes, one of the two main cruxes. One is that story I told you in the beginning on this. There are acharonim shesoivrim that hold the mitzvahs chinoch that the father can fulfill the training and, tra and education of the child in mitzvahs. He can mitzchaim, he can fill it. Gamat b'shol, also with a Dalit minim set that are borrowed. The hogam mischanech haben the mitzvahs. Because also through this set of Dalit minim, the son is being trained in the mitzvah of Dalit minim. The chay mashma be Mordechai, who's a rishon in the back of every Gemara and quoted extensively in, in Shulchan Aruch. B'shem Raven, the Raven who is a contemporary just after Rashi which I'm going to show you. And he explains it so well. Here, the Sharatin is also the Mishnah Now, I want you to see, I told you that there is also a third method. So what I'm about to explain to you now is the third method of how you can deal with the cotton. And also a little bit more detail, just one more line about how that is possible how it's possible that you say that you've got to train the child in mitzvahs and yet you can be yaitza, one of the rules is that it has to be shalachem and yet you can still be fulfill the mitzvah for a cotton if it's only a borrowed thing. He's going to explain that in one line. Let's just go through it. He writes there the Raven and the Mordechai, Ubekie hadas, this is the third thing. So what we've had is six and seven year olds can give it, first forget that one. Other one is you hold it together with his hand. Let's forget that one also. And how about this third one? Well, Bikiye Das, knowledgeable people, Machzirin Oisei Lemikoyme. After they've used the Dalit, the, the Lulav and Esri, they just put it back down on the table to its place. And the children come and take it themselves and make the Brachan themselves. So it's brought in the Erzarua, right? So he's a one of the biggest gedolim, the Rabbi Yitzchak Levine, in in the, in the name of Rabbi Lozer ben Nosson, omid shibach oisan, and since he praises them, the guys who put it back on the table, he praises them. He calls them bekiye adas. These are experts in knowledge. He praises them. Mashma the svira leikain laalocha. So that's mashma. That's daalocha. Well, a day or According to the first opinion, I'm taking out of that context, but the first opinion is the Rosh and the Mogan of Rom. You don't fulfill the mitzvah of Chinuch because uh, you, haven't, uh, you haven't given him his own. It's just borrowed. Now, this is the part. But according to the Ezeru and the Raven that say, you just put it down on the table. You don't give him a gift. You just let him take it on his own, the Tinnitus. This is the line, one line that Mishnabura says, so beautiful. He holds the Ezeru and the Raven. There's a big Rishonim. The mitzvah hurak al etzama mitzvah. It's only on the actual mitzvah. Beloy al protea mitzvah, not on details of the mitzvah. And this is how I'm explaining it to you. When you train a kid how to do Dalit Minim, you show here, you pick up the S Lulav in your right hand, and you then you make the bracha. Then you pick up the S rig in your left hand. I don't think you can see me. And then you show him how to shake it, and then you show him how to do it, and you show him that it's got to be Derek Gidula. You show him all of the all of the actual way of fulfilling the mitzvah that if you don't do it in this way, there's a Lulav in your right hand and S in your left hand, unless if you're left-handed. Then if you left hand a little bit in your left hand, the rest of it in your right hand, all of the all the ets and the things of the mitzvah that if you don't do it the right way, you're not yitzah. That is what's training in the mitzvah. But a prat of the mitzvah, the fact that it's if it's a borrowed thing or not, that's not going to change how he knows how to do the mitzvah. If you've told him how to do north, south, east, west, and all of that, and how to pick it up. So the next year when he's 13, he'll do exactly the same way. Okay, he'll buy his own. Yeah. 
but the actual performance of the mitzvah per se is what you're training him in doing. Putting the tefillah in his hand and showing him how to do the knot is what you're using, using for the tefillah. That's what you're training him in, in the process and the experience of the mitzvah. And on that, the Urzerua and the Rive in here are saying that for chinuch, for a cotton, you can put the little of an estrog on the table. You don't have to give it to him. Let him take it. You've already shown him how to do it, and he can do it himself. Ah, it's borrowed. Okay, it's borrowed, but it's, it's that's not the chinuch of the mitzvah. Chinuch of the mitzvah is the actual experience and training of doing that performance of the mitzvah. Now, that is what the, the Zerua and the Raven hold. And I want to say that what I just said then, this is all, this is the Mishnah Bura still. That's the Chidah on, on the on Shulchanah. Shigam hu kosov, the Mizem Ashim besvira le Raven, the Yuchal ha koton, little lulav below Akno. The Raven who says, you just put it back down on the table and the top cotton takes it by himself. Holds, but obviously that a cotton can take a little of without being uh, without anyone giving him a matana, without anyone giving it to him as an acquisition. And in fact, the Mishnah Bura concurs, become pashtius halosh in the shulchanach, that other case which he says of holding it together with him, the cost of shaper domi, where the Baal shulchanach, the Mechaba says, yeah, and that's a good idea. It's good that he holds it together with him. Which I've just explained that the father doesn't give it to him, he keeps it in his hand. That the father can do so to um, get his son to build cotton to do the mitzvah, the of minim, to make a brocha without giving it to him. And the cotton can fulfill what is required of him. So that's very powerful, exceedingly powerful. There's two Rishonim that I've mentioned. I'm going to show you more. The more the Raiban, the Mordechai, the, the Birka Yosef, and the Mishnah Bura. This is the Raiban himself, the original Raiban. I'm not going to read it all through because I suppose it'll get boring. Let me see what's the time, 9, 10. Just go to the green. Or should I read the whole lot now? I'll read it fast. Amar Abzeda, sorry. Amar Abzeda, Essex, and if so, also, let's see, we said that already. Yeah. Okay. But Amar Abzeda, this is the right. I put his little thing here, blood. Lord 1090. Rashi passed away 1105. So, you know, it's the same sort of a time. Okay. You shouldn't uh, give a, over a gift of a lulav to a child on the first day of Yontav. But to, to give away, he cannot give away. And then he'll find that once he's given the lulav to his cotton, then he, the father, will not be Yosa any further with that lulav. It won't be his own. He can't do anything with it because the cotton can't give it back to him. The fikoch, therefore, lo yitein adam latinik levarech at shivarech ha kohol until the whole kohol is blessed. If you should call a kohol koinim biyachad esli b'daytom, they can be koinim. They're all adats. The kach tzara shei kolecha biyachad b'shas natila gedolim shem b'nei das v'yoyin and likloi sula haknis and give it back. I will cotton lo motzla haknis. He cannot give it away. Koinahu, yeah, he could acquire it. Nimsa hanoit len achra of yoytim belul of shenish alahem. So anyone who takes a little back from the cotton is not yoytze because it's not their own. So this is what he suggested, which is what they did, not what he suggested. What well, this is not something of tongue to talk. And so did the knowledgeable experts of Mainz, Germany, Neugier, custom to do. After the call, call Hom Gitong Mitzis Dalat Minim, Machzir in Esalul of Neha Oroin, they put the Lulav in front of the Oroin. And the bima, the sham hoy look cake like in ice on it on it from from dark on the kinder genome on a vorken and I did this the chain no and so it's beautiful. The toughest layer godel and this is the second thing and if the older the elk the godel 
over my mitzvah holds the lulav and estic bahadia cotton together with the cotton to no lofik lay legamon and miyali so that doesn't go out of his hands and his ownership at all. Lay slump all that's also not a problem. He's the way Zerua, the same. It doesn't go out of his hand. Sharper domi because it's still in his own. Or bikiyah does the second method. Not to hold it in his hand, just leave it on the table. That's also bikiyah does and sharper domi. And in all of these cases, and here's the original, here's the Mordechai later than all of them. Well, he makes an interesting change. Maybe even very suitable. Because of Rav and Mio im hu oichei zimatinek, kibin shehu loyotz the miyodi legamri shaper dami. If he's holding it together with him, and so he's still got it in his hands, and still in his ownership and possession, he's doing a good thing. The elderly person hagam the cotton does not gain it at all. It's not his own, but he's still doing the mitzvah. When a kiei does rather than the kiei. On a key does and don't have clean thought, who've got a very clear thought of process. They just put it down on the place. So you've got all of these opinions and the God's Ashri in the Rosh himself. Can you believe it? The Rosh himself, who doesn't allow a borrowed, says that a cotton has to, cannot use a shawl, has to use shell, has to be his own. But in the Haggadah Sashri, the Haggadah is there, which is usually brings this, brings from the Urzeru as well, that you can, and the Raivan, that if you hold it with the Tinak, it's Chaper Dome and Bikidas, just put it down and the Tinak takes it. So, what do I get from all of this in summary? Well, I think I'm not going to do the Birka Yasa because we've just done it, basically. Oh no, I think I will do it because it'll it'll give you it'll give you just one more enlightened thing. Just do the red. So mashma from all of those things that we said, the Raven, the Erzarua, the Mordechai, the Hagos Ashri, all of those. Mashma lechoyra, Hagos Ashri, Baha Mordechai, the Kanton, the Yom Tevrishon, Nafik Bishayla. That a cotton can be yoter the mitzvah of dalat minim with a borrowed set of dalat minim. V'yochol levorek, and he can make the bracha. Shek shabbos eitz v'alam tilas luluf. Heipach mashmois divrei harosh harosh, contrary to the opinion meaning of the opinion of the rosh, which I must tell you that the Birka Yosef. This is a long. In that he writes, he tries to force in that the Rosh might or even agree to that. And also the opposite of the great Achroinim who say that you can't be yotzer with a cotton, can't be yotzer with a shayla. And the one that comes strikes, comes straight to mind is the Mogan Avram who says openly you can't be yotzer with a borrowed one. Elo, but we've just said he showed the Gosh Ashri, the Mordechai and the Raven. But these ones, these expert ones, these, these experts who said that you can just put it down, even though they said you can be yotzer with borrowing, and they're all lots of Bishonim we just said, they never said, oh, you can be yotzer with a borrowed less lulav of an esrik. just lend him the lulav of an esrik. They never said, give it to him openly, to the Yenuka Bishayla, give it to him as a loan. Or lit for Simatinik. Or they don't say, here, hold it with him. Pen Yira Be'enim Achra Roya, because someone who in the back, in the background might see them saying, here, I'm lending it to you, my little boy. But Kotoi, and that person standing in the background might make a mistake and think, oh, you're allowed to lend your little of an aspect. But Kotoi, and make a mistake. The Kihai Governor, that in such a way of lending it to the cotton, you can do Begot Nami with your elderly person as well. And he can be Nof, he can be Yitz also with a borrowing. Avaldinahu. So therefore, we, they never say, lend it to, they never say, here, little boy, I'm lending it to you. But they say, here, I'm putting it down on the table and you'll take it if you want. 
It doesn't say if, if he's borrowing it. They just put it down on the table. They don't say anything. They don't say lending. That way, you can't mistake and think that lending's okay for God. Aval dinahu. But the law is, according to all these Rishonim, the cotton after Yom Tov is Nafik B'Shela. A cotton on the first day of Yom Tov can be yoyed to with borrowed dollar minim as the explanation of the Mishnah Brura, that we're only expecting you to train him in how to practically do the mitzvah. And that's what the training is for in performing the mitzvah. But side issues of whether it's got the legality of yours and so forth, those are side issues which are not part of the Etz Mitzvah. And even if he said it's your yoitza until you give it back, opposite of what the Rosh and others like him say. So that's the end of my slideshow. And how do I get back into stop share? Let's see, can I get back in here? How do I get a quick, a quick exit to go out of that? That's for a start. Yeah, you did that. You can take, you can take me. Can you put my picture up? Can you put my picture up? Back up. I'm up. I only see you. What? Can I see others as well? Everyone can see you. All right. Okay, I'm talking. So let's go back to what the answer is. How are we going to treat our cotton? with regards to Dalit Minim on Sukkot. So we have two clear opinions. We have the, I'm gonna say the Rosh is a clear opinion as well, even though the Birka Yosef tries to, does struggle with it to try to find out, but the Rosh and definitely the Mogan of Rome for hundred percent. So you can't be Yosef, the cotton can't be Yosef with a borrowed dollar, set of Dalit Minim. <clears throat> but on the other hand, let's not, uh, push away all of those Rishonim that we just said. And I showed them all to you that he can be Yitzhah with a set of borrowed dollar minim. So that leaves open to us two methods of how to deal with a cotton with regards to dollar minim on Yom Tov, first day Yom Tov, and second day Yom Tov for that matter. So the Mechaber in Shulchan says you buy him, buy him a pair, buy him a set of dollar minim. But you remember that story I told with Rosalman in the beginning? I got the same story with myself. All my generation, everybody. Our parents, none of our parents, we didn't have kids running around with Dalit Minim. Kids under Bar Mitzvah, your grandparents, Aaron's, Zev Aaron, and uh, you all there. They didn't have, they didn't have little Rafal and Akiva and Yossi running around with their own dullet minim. I can tell you that right now. I didn't see him, I was in Sydney, but they didn't. We never bought, to, the parents didn't barely, but they had enough money for some kind for Zichal You know, so they didn't buy for their kids. And what are you gonna say? There's the big Shulchan right? There's no altar evidence. The big Shulchan there's no more, more arguing on him whatsoever. And the big Shulchan and the more they say, a cotton knows how to do Dalit Minim. The father must buy him a set of Dalit Minim. And Geber Cook, all of our parents who are all El Chayidin, never bought their kids Dalit Minim. Hey, Pukshul What are you going to say? They're bad people. It's ridiculous. There never was any better people than those people, what they went through in the war and whatever they had. And yet they didn't do it. So what are we going to say? Now, I'm telling you, don't buy it because it says Shulchan That's it's, it's silly, it's stupid. But well, this is what I'm going to tell you. Lives and times have changed. I noticed today, when I bought my kid a scooter, I bought him a scooter for 60 bucks, 40, 50 bucks. When they came out, bought him, I don't know what. Now, they get him a scooter. The guy is flying down the footpath. I don't know how many hundreds of bucks that costs. You know, they don't buy him a crummy little scooter from Aldi's anymore. You know? They get him the scooter that's an electric scooter that's going gazetted. You know, it's going really well. You know, they don't get him the Game Boy for forty bucks. They get him some. <laughs> I don't know what they call it. You know, like that big. Uh, 
big setup system of playing computer games. It can be costing thousand dollars. I don't know what it can cost. So Baruch Hashem, yeah, buy for him. Why shouldn't you buy for him? Let him have good things. They should have good things. And what are you going to think to yourself? Rabbi Ash is selling Dalit medium for, for kids for $60 a set, completely kosher. I promise you, I don't sell one possible law of Esther and Gorgas. And guys rush here to do it. A lot of guys do it. Not many, I suppose, 1015. And I've got out there for all of you guys. And I don't want to sell it. Don't buy it from me, but buy it from somebody else. But I'm just telling you, if you're the type of guy that buys your kid a scooter for $200, if you're the type of guy who buys your kid the, the toy, the Tatsuka, for $70, for $80, you could buy him a set of Dalit Mini of his own. I'm not going to make it up for you. You have to do it yourself. Epistops to Tom, something you got to do. You can buy your set of kid a set on Erev Yom Tov, and he'll have his own Dalit Mini his youngest ones. And I tell you, just from experience, obviously you can't do what I do. I've got a little of my hair fall out. And so I used to buy, you know my boys now, my boys are not like me exactly. But I tell you what, they know how to put together a set of Dalit Minim better than I do and better than any of you guys do. They know how to do Dalit Minim perfect. From when they're four and five from four, they've had their own Dalit Minim. And it's such an unbelievably great feeling. You feel so good. Do I feel good if my kid's got a bike? I don't feel that great about it. But when I see him carry his Dalit Minim to shore, I feel uplifted, you know? What are we here for? If not for something like that, you know? Anyway, so that's, it's something very meaningful. But on the other hand, I'm telling you, I don't know, because there were times when I did not have $60 to my name. That's for sure. And there's plenty of you guys that, that are also struggling for a buck. So don't feel you have to buy your kid a thing. But the hostoch, the raivan, you have the morhai, you have the herasirua, you have the mishnah brura, you have the birka yosef, that says your yosef with a baradul of an asset, period. You got my parents, you got your grandparents, they never bought for their kids. They never bought for them. So you don't have to buy. So don't, there's no big obligation, they don't have to buy. You've got two methods, and it's almost like what the Taz said to the Rashal. What are you having a go at the Mahabha for saying buy him? And you say, don't buy him, just uh, don't buy him. It depends. If you're in a position, a situation, you can do it and you're able to do it, okay, do it. And if you're not, no big deal, because you're used to it, borrow it anyway. And that's in the Pura of the night. Nobody has to go away feeling guilty. Nobody has to worry about doing anything. Everything should well go well. All the Dalit Minim, everybody should be behind the midst of Dalit Minim, and be able to do it in such an way for them to come in based on Mikdash, because in the base of Mikdash, you keep it all, you know, in the best way possible. And uh, with the coming of Mashiach Tsekeno, and I hope that you got something practical out of tonight, instead of me just talking and showing you what an Esri looks like, what a Hulav looks like. And next year, maybe we'll talk a different topic. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Thank you. See you. Take me off the Thanks, Tati. <laughs> yeah, great cheer. See you. Bye.